Anderson, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Sheldon Concert Hall for a video, a brief video, in the Sheldon Online Academy series. I'd like to give a brief overview of some of the principles underlying decisions in piano fingering. When a pianist approaches the keyboard, you have a basic assumption, and that is the lower white keys and the upper black keys. And for a long time, pianists have assumed that the thumb, the heaviest and lowest finger, really mostly belongs on the white keys. Now, there are many situations in which you need to use the thumb on black keys, but in order to avoid unwanted accents, it's generally better to keep the thumb mostly on white keys. And this is essentially, I think, the logic behind the development of your basic scales for major and minor scales. Basic fingerings, pardon me, for major and minor scales. I'll start with B major because Chopin actually did so with his students. It's very easy to play this type of scale, which I call a black key group scale. And that is because the thumbs always play together. And then these, this group of two black keys is played with these two fingers, thumbs together, and then the group of three black keys with these three long fingers, and then thumbs together. And you can practice it like this if you'd like. several other scales that have this basic orthography. Now we also have the C major type scales, for example G major, now you'll notice that I only played my fifth finger at the bottom of the left hand and the top of the right hand. Uh, the fifth finger is really the pinky. It's only really a terminal finger in piano playing if you're going to play a pattern uh, that is, is replicated. You really need to use the thumb because you can pass over and under the thumb. So this type of scale um, is symmetrical in So if you're having trouble organizing the fingering in your mind, practice contrary motion will really help you to keep track of that. There are a few other um, fingering principles I'd like to present today. Uh, the first is, uh, what do you do when you come up, up across a passage with re repeated notes? For example, in Domenico Scarlatti's brilliant sonata, Kirkpatrick 141. It features a lot of repeated notes in the right hand and then these wonderful guitar chords with their dissonances in the left hand. Um, now, if I tried to play, I would pretty soon hurt my wrist. Um, so pianists have evolved a way of dealing with this, and that is to group the fingers 3, 2, 1, or 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you have metric groupings in 4s, 3s, etc., you select contiguous fingers, and I like to use kind of a scraping motion like this, um, and I try to find the same contact point on each key, um, and essentially, because there are six notes per bar, in this particular pattern, then I use two groups of three, three, two, one. So that's an example of how one would play this type of virtuosic repeated note. Um, if it were groups of four, you would play four, three, two, one, etc. Now, in melodic situations, you sometimes want to change fingers. For example, if I have a pattern, and I'm on my thumb, but I want to hold that note. We use finger substitution very often. This is what organists will do, is they bequeath it to us. We sometimes rely upon the pedal to hold notes on the piano, but I think it's advisable to use our fingers if we can. Now finally, this is a little more subtle, and this is an expressive thing, and I'd like to use Mozart's sonata in E-flat major, KV-282, the, the beautiful adagio that opens that sonata, as an example. Now there's a melody at the beginning, which if I play the repeated notes with the same finger that I was on, sounds a little bit wooden, but if I actually change fingers on the repetitions, sounds more singing. Just as in speech, very often, one syllable will be a little more emphasized, a little louder, a little softer than the next, and that creates a flowing quality in speech. So in this kind of lyrical playing, I much prefer
these are just a few ideas related to fingerings I'd like to share with you today. Um, there are many more where that came from, but um, stay tuned for the next installment from the Sheldon Online Academy. Happy practicing and pay attention to those fingerings. Thank you.